saw from Blake. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell you, folks, can't, can't get tired of seeing this. Welcome to 48 Minutes. Smash that ravishing like button. It's been a little while. We are in the Western and Eastern Conference Finals. Boston, as I well predicted, everybody predicted, is there. They would definitely be in the NBA Finals. Tatum, Brown, Horford, Porzingis, Maybe coming back game four, but they'll be there. Shout out to the upstart Ty Halliburton led Pacers, Miles Turner, who has been rumored for years to be involved in trades with the Lakers, with Buddy Hill being included, but he ended up keeping them. And I think we're getting this, a chance to see the unique talent. That Miles Turner has. It won't be enough for Boston, but I just wanted to give him a shout out. Now, we have Dallas. Luka Doncic, Mr. All World himself, Kyrie Irving, polarizing. He's matured a whole lot. He went from resisting the leadership of LeBron James to eventually seeing what the leadership is all about. And he's matured into a leader. He's a big voice in that locker room. He's inspired Luka Doncic to play defense. As you heard him say after game one, defense wins championships. And let's not forget, he has handles that are like Michael Jackson to Chris Brown on the dance floor, like Eric Clapton or Prince on the guitar. Uncle Drew's handles are nothing to be undesired it is insane wow he took a challenge he heard that man say i got Kyrie." first half he wore ant-man out as you see at the end of the game ant-man was out of breath now keep in mind this is only game one minnesota was coming off of a seven game series a very grueling especially game seven when they were down 20 points their legs were probably tight muscles tight and they fought they had, they had home court advantage they were at home they took a four-point lead late but as you've seen their leader the next michael jordan as many have called him he was out of breath he had nothing left he did everything he could he did hold Kyrie to four points in the second half but at what expense? Because he could not do it on the offensive end. I think that instead of the drop back defense, I really think they should man up against Kyrie and Luka and play a one-two behind them. Those are my thoughts. I love defense myself. While we're at it, let's give a shout out to an amazing executive who doesn't mind taking risks, Tim Connolly. He built the Denver roster to a championship last year. He built that roster. That roster was his masterpiece, his Van Gogh, his Da Vinci, his Mona Lisa. He comes over to Minnesota. Everybody, including me, ridiculed him for trading for Rudy Gobert. They gave up a trove of assets to bring him in. He said, hey, I hope I don't mess this up. Very humbly. He didn't mind taking risks. He said, we can't be worried about what everybody else is doing. We've got to dig our own path. And he traded a player I continue to ridicule. Some I would have did. He got rid of D'Angelo Russell, one of the most inconsistent point guards in the NBA who should be a six man, a spark plug, a microwave, so to speak, coming off the bench. He unloaded him and he was able to bring in Michael Alexander Walker and Mike Conley, veteran presence and a player who loves playing defense. This is the one who was laughing at Jamal Murray when he picked him up and had him flustered going full court and knocks down big shots. 
He re-signed Carl Anthony Towns, Nas Reed, and Anthony Edwards. And speaking of Nas Reed, he was there before Connolly got there, but he has to be one of the greatest so far over the last 10 years, undrafted free agents. He was undrafted, folks. Look what he's doing for Minnesota. Many of you think that he should be starting ahead of Rudy Gobert. I think he's great being a spark plug off the bench. The culture they have in Minnesota is only going to grow. Their leader is young, very young. Carl Anthony Towns is young. Nas Reed is young. Nikhil Alexander Walker, he's also young. Their coach is innovative. They have an innovative executive. The man that put the roster together for Denver to win a championship smartly built a roster to beat that very same team. Shout out Tim Connolly. Let's enjoy these playoffs. And by the way, I was wrong. I picked Denver and Boston in the finals. I did pick Denver and Minnesota to go seven games. They did have a 20 point lead, but I was wrong. Minnesota, they're ahead of schedule. We'll have more in the playoffs. Enjoy, get your popcorn ready. I still think Minnesota prevails. Dallas, I think Indiana would be lucky to win one game. Boston have been sitting for a while, sitting back with their arms folded, waiting. Now they got the cobwebs and the rust off. Now you're about to see that fine oil team handle business against the Pacers. On to the most talked about team in NBA, LA Lakers. It looks like it's JJ Reddick's job to lose. That's LeBron's boy. Krzyzewski was hired as a consultant in the coaching search. J.J. Redick and Krzyzewski has a great relationship. The thing is, I don't think that any coach is going to be able to gel or excel with this roster. This roster needs a massive overhaul. When you look at the Timberwolves, you look at the Celtics, you look at the Mavericks, the Pacers, the teams that are left. Lakers don't quite match up. I think they will beat the Pacers. I don't think they're beating any of those other three. I would prefer to have, and this is only because Mark Jackson has been blackballed. I think that he may be the top two or three motivating coaches in the NBA. Once again, but since he's been blackballed, as has been stated by so many insiders in the NBA, I would say hire Micah Nori, who was an assistant under Mike Malone in Denver, and he's now an assistant under Finch in Minnesota. He's been around the league. He is the architect under Finch of that defense in Minnesota. Any offense, he is well-rounded. He bonds well with players. You got to do something different. You can't keep recycling. Yet, I don't think it's a good idea to hire a coach, to hire someone who's never been an assistant coach, better yet a head coach, in J.J. Redick. I think he would make a great executive. But him being the next Pat Riley, like Jeannie Buss has said, uh-uh. Not coaching. Executive-wise, I think his basketball acumen and IQ are extremely high. But I think he's going to fail if they hire him as a head coach with that roster. And with LeBron being his friend, he's only going to be in the NBA one or two more years. And you're going to see that ship start to sink. Remember, Lakers don't have many assets. They don't have cap space. And because of their middling roster, they're going to be at the bottom of the, of the pile when it comes to NBA draft time. They still owe a first round pick to the Pelicans. Now, what do they do? Did the Pelicans take it this year? They take it next year. We'll see. We'll find out. But the saga continues. And what is known as the mess in LA, the LA Lakers, the Lake Show. Enjoy the playoffs. 48 to 60 minutes around the ring, around the track, 
inside the octagon all things sports